This isn't a cow, but it's producing dairy that goes into this yogurt and this cream cheese. It's run out of a lab on the outskirts of Tel Aviv by a tech company called Remilk. They're a leader in the emerging lab-grown dairy industry. It's been overshadowed by lab-grown meat, but labs like these are trying to solve the same problem, taking heavily polluting animals out of the food chain as a way to fight climate change. We're not changing the final product. We're just changing the way to produce it. So is it working? This is Lab Made, a series about an industry challenging the way we think about food and whether it can live up to its promise of changing the world. We love our dairy products, whether it's ice cream, cream cheese, cheese from all over the world. But that's a problem. Most dairy comes from cows, with some from goats, buffalo, sheep, and others. And their burps and farts emit methane. A lot of it. Methane's a big contributor to climate change. The gas traps more heat in our atmosphere than carbon dioxide. Raising animals and the crops to feed them also uses up tons of natural resources. More than half of the world's arable land and a lot of water. Enter lab-grown dairy. Instead of growing a cow for several years until it starts producing milk, the entire process from starting uh, fermenting the, the microbe until you have a final product is only taking a few days. The lab-grown industry has gotten more than $1 billion in investments over the last five years. And there's dozens of companies around the world looking to do similar things. Unlike lab-grown meat, Animal-free dairy uses a process that already exists for things like medicine and beer with machines like these. It's called precision fermentation. We'll explain that in a minute. The fact that this tech already exists is why it's been approved for sale in several countries. In the US, it's considered grass or generally recognized as safe. One US company, Perfect Day, has produced its own animal-free dairy that's used in this ice cream. This is my colleague Ashley in New York. So I got the chocolate ice cream. Nice. Let's see how it goes. Mm. I feel like I'm gonna, I can't finish the pint easily. I love it. Despite the industry growth, there's not a lot of studies out there about the environmental impact of lab-grown dairy. One of the most cited ones was commissioned by Perfect Day, the company that makes that ice cream. The paper suggests that the environmental footprint of its protein production can be up to 96% lower than the same protein found in traditional milk an energy savings equivalent to what 28 million American homes would use in a year. But some people have a problem with this study, and to understand that, we need to understand how lab-grown dairy is made. So remember this thing called precision fermentation I mentioned? To explain how it works, I brought in a friend, a precision fermentation microbe. Hey! Hey! Precision fermentation works by copying down the DNA sequence of a milk protein and giving it as an instruction manual to microorganisms. These microbes then multiply in fermenters while producing milk protein. It's the same thing that happens in beer brewing. What the? But with protein instead. And here's a key thing about this. Only about 20% of what comes out of precision fermentation is dairy protein. Most of it is a byproduct called biomass the equivalent of leftover grain during the beer making process. This is where the problem comes in. Perfect day study, they assumed that the microbiome biomass is used as a, as a pet food. There are issues with utilizing this biomass because it is genetically modified. This is Hannah Tuomisto. Her team is one of the few independent groups who study precision fermentation. What she's saying is that the study's best case scenario in cutting down emissions relies on using that biomass as pet food. But that might not be possible in places like the EU, where genetically modified products are far more strictly regulated. According to another study, which was funded by Fonterra, a New Zealand dairy company, if we're only looking at the protein end product of each process, lab-grown isn't greener than conventional dairy by default. How production facilities source their energy is a big question, and also where they get the sugar needed to grow the microbes. In a worst case scenario, lab-grown dairy might even have a bigger carbon footprint. There is no kind of perfect solution to produced milk protein. There are uh, things that affect the results and sustainability in both cases. 
In response to our questions, Perfect Day said it's aware of the allocation problem between protein and biomass. It noted that its study was limited to the US, where its protein would have a smaller carbon footprint if it accounted for 100% of emissions. So why is cultivated dairy still a good idea if plenty of dairy alternatives already exist? The climate emergency is so dire and animal conditions are so dire. We can't give it another century to see if everyone just goes plant-based. We need something. It's like a, you know, a stepping stone in a way. For consumers, animal-free dairy offers exact same nutrients as traditional dairy, many of which can't be found in alternatives like oat or soy milk. That is, of course, if we can afford it. For now, animal-free dairy is still a lot more expensive than traditional milk and non-dairy alternatives. Remilk wouldn't say how much their test products currently cost, but it believes mass production is the main way of bringing prices down. This June, it announced it's building the world's largest precision fermentation plant in Denmark and plans to start selling their products by the end of the year. Eventually, to outperform the traditional market, we need two things. We need to be quality parity, which means that we have the same taste, the same functionality and everything, we, and we need to be at least cost parity. So is the taste worth it? Yeah, it's really good. Thank you. <laughs> it's really good. The jury's still out on what a world filled with lab-grown dairy products will look like. If the tech becomes as good for the environment and the wallet as it promises to be, then there might just be some, well, greener pastures out there for cows in the near future. Fitting, right? Yeah, this is a, an example of a retired cow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Thanks for watching. This video is part of a series about the world of lab grown foods, an industry that promises tech solutions for global issues like climate change, food security, and others by changing what we eat. In the next episode, We'll look at whether lab-grown meat can be considered kosher or halal.